running around under caution here at Martinsville, Virginia. We're about set to get the Advanced Auto Parts 500 underway. This race is run in two segments, 300 laps for these Bush Grand National cars, and then later today, the late model stocks will run their 200-lap feature event. New distance for them this year. He'll be riding in the Virginia Department of Tourism, number 25. The governor is here today to present a big check to a driver who wins the Virginia Cup, best finish in all the Virginia races in the series. And Kirby Sadler has given the state of Virginia quite a ride this season. That victory up at Rougemont, and he is the circuit's leading rookie. We'll have two cameras in Hermes' car. And there's Steve Grissom. He's not driving Hermes' car, folks. We're also riding with Steve Grissom here today. And there's the face cam as Steve, the point leader, gets ready to go to work. You see that big uh, headrest on the right-hand side. And the radio hookup gear for Grissom. And there's the over-the-shoulder mother-in-law cam as you look ahead at rookie Tim Fedor. In the channel lock car of Steve Grissom. There's a look at it and his Chevrolet. He'll be starting back in 30th position. 15th throw. Now let's go back to Hermie Sadler. And he lines up on the front row next to Joe Nemechek. Our director, Gary Clem, calls this the dog sticking its head out the window cam. Because that's about what it does along the right side there. And it can swing around. And show you the rookie driver at work. There's also our race cam in the upper left of the picture. That's what it sees. Looking out the front windshield. Hermes car at the Pontiac safety car. Tommy Houston's going to go out and run a little exploratory lap as there's the uh, Virginia Department of Tourism. They're all here. Yeah, Mike, they're going to... They sent uh, Houston out as the rabbit to check the track out and see if it's dry enough to go racing. Yeah, Mike, they sent him out there just to see if the uh, track was dry enough. So Houston catches up a lap or two and then he'll go back, he'll go back to his spot in the starting lineup. We have not counted a lap here at Martinsville. We've run about a dozen or so under caution, and NASCAR is saying perhaps five more laps. And we may be ready to go green. Now, there was a lot of smoke from Jeff Burton's car when he fired up the Dilmar Tossi Baby Ruth Ford. Let's get the story from Glenn. Well, Mike, he caused uh, quite a few anxious moments there for Jeff Burton. What happened was when he fired the car up, for some reason, the fire extinguisher went off. Filled the car with smoke, dust, and everything. NASCAR's going to let the cars come in and, and refuel before they start this race. But Jeff needs two big glasses of water to wash the fire extinguisher dust out of his mouth. Now, this crew was pretty anxious anyway. Three of these guys are awaiting the end of racing season. They're going to get married. Gil Martin, the crew chief, Stan Blaylock, and Newt Moore. They're marrying Rhonda Jackson, Michelle Guthrie, and Rhonda Boyd in order. Now, the two Rhondas are giving a shower for Michelle today. Girls, I hope you're doing better than these guys. They're out here playing with fire extinguishers. I'll see what I can do to calm them down. <laughs> well, it's showered here until about noon, Glenn. I hope they didn't have anything to do with the festivities. We'll run a few more laps here to make sure there's enough heat in the track to go racing and then look for the green flag. Look at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains here in Virginia. It's a peak fall color in southern New England, and down here, I guess it's about a week and a half or two away. Leaves on the trees just starting to turn, and a pretty fair crowd on hand to watch the Bush Grand Nationals and the late model stocks. 59 degrees, the humidity is almost 100%. Sure feels like it's stepping out there. Get your, get your butter knife, you can cut it. You don't need a sharp one. Wind out of the northeast at a three miles an hour. And cloudy with fog is the forecast, but no rain showing on the NASCAR weather radar. Martinsville, Virginia. Just a shade over half a mile as they measure it here. 12 degree bank in the turns. But Neil, you've wrestled 3,500 pound cars around here for a long, long time. These corners have got to feel real flat. I tell you what, Mike, they say there's some banking in there. When you run off in the car, it doesn't feel like there's any banking at all. And what's so unique about this racetrack is a short distance from straightaway to straightaway. There's very little room in between the two straightaways. The corners are so tight. And I'm telling you, you work the car to death in this place. The motor kills itself, the brakes. We don't, we talk all the time about how tough this track is. It's an understatement when you, uh, the abuse one of these cars has to take at this place. They have allowed the cars to come to pit road and stop to clean the windshield of any mist and also to take on fuel. And the last of those, who's in that car today? Jimmy Hensley. I tell you, there's wow. enough car change and driver <laughs> change around. It's hard to put. And you know, Mike, a lot of that stuff was done like spur of the moment. I talked to some guys here, and they said, hey, we, we talked to our guy Thursday. He said, you're not driving for us anymore. So 
there's not a lot of smooth transition going on. There's a lot of good changes being made, but uh, a lot of times one guy will make a move, he upsets the team, and hey, he's out. And that's what's happening to some of this. And some teams trying to get a head start for next year as a result. We'll see. Joe Nemechek is at the front of the field as we get set to go racing here. And uh, Nemechek resting that car back and forth, getting set to go. On the outside pole, Hermie Sadler, the rookie driver. You're watching Todd Bodine. I asked him about it. Said, he says, well, we goofed up at qualifying. He said, well, when we start 13th to 16th, we do real well. Uh, he says, it's a Steve Grissom kind of thing. I tell you what, you know, you're talking about guys who are running good in practice. I clocked one time there. You know, he was, Todd Bodine was really, really quick. And then Presley was just like he said, looked like he had a shot at the pole. The 99 car ran good. There were so many guys, but at Martinsville, you either hit it or you miss it a mile. And a two or three of the top cars actually spun in qualifying. You don't see that very often, but you really got to go after it to set up front on track this size. The other guy to start counting laps this time by. They've refueled the cars. They're going to run a couple of green-yellow laps to make sure the track... You can see the gray in the asphalt in the left-hand two lanes where the cars usually run here. And it's still quite damp down there at the apron of the racetrack. NASCAR is not too concerned with that. They want to make sure that they have a couple of good raceable grooves. And the upper lanes are dry. So they have counted laps under a green-yellow situation. This will be the first lap of the race. Nemechek will be credited with leading it. And will be set to go. Neil says you either hit it or miss it here. And he's right. Let's show you the fellows who missed it. Ten cars did not make the show. Troy Beebe, David Bonnet, George Crenshaw, Steve Darning. Pat Davison, Steve McEachern, Jamie James, the motorcyclist, Tommy Ellis, Tom Hessert, the IMSA driver, Buckshot Jones. The cars did what, not make the show. We rolled in here, you know, there's, every time you come to one of these bush uh, races, there's more and more cars showing up. It's hard to imagine where the strength financially and the, the drivers just keep coming from. But I'm telling you, this thing right here, that they are already seeing that this is the stepping stone in the Winston Cup racing. We'll get more depth in the Bush Series all the time. And on given occasions, this Bush Series is cranking out as good or maybe better short track racing than we see with the Winston Cup cars because these cars are a little more agile than the big Winston Cup cars. Absolutely. They're, they're not so tough on tires. They're running a couple of hundred pounds less weight. Little V6 motors by comparison. Here with Steve Grissom as we show you what's at stake here today for the 32 cars that will start this race. 300 laps is a new distance this spring. Originally, this doubleheader was modifieds and bush cars, 250 laps apiece. Then they made it a triple header, 200, 200, and 100 for the late model stocks. And now, sadly for many of us, the modifieds are gone from Martinsville, and it's 300 laps for the bush cars and 200 for the late model stocks. Well, the starter has green flag in hand, so we're only a couple laps away. They'll complete four laps this time and face the green flag here at Martinsville, Virginia. 300 laps of Bush Grand National Racing live on the network that brings you more Bush racing than everybody else combined, the Nashville Network. Green flag. Joe Nemechek hauls them down into turn number one. He's got Ernie Irvin right on his bumper. Hermie Sadler up high, and Neely's first couple laps going to be a little treacherous. I tell you what, the worst thing you could possibly do is run race tires around slow, though, like a spread. They pick up every bit of the track on the track, and this first few laps going to take a little bit of work to get some heat in the tires. That Sadler caught up to the outside. Ernie Irvin is underneath, and he's going to look for the second spot. Sadler can't come down to close off the groove as you ride way in the back of the pack with Steve Grissom. Back up front. There's Ernie Irvin in the 74 car on this side. Sadler looks like he's going to be able to get that car down on the inside. Oh, he couldn't quite do it. Chuck Brown, well, yeah, he did. Brown slipped a little bit up off the corner. If you've ever been to a racetrack or you want to be on the inside, this is it. <laughs> right around that yellow curve, it's four inches high off the bottom of the racetrack in those concrete corners. And Sadler drops in line in third, just ahead of Chuck Brown, Rodney Combe, Johnny Rumley, David Green, and just as he predicted, Robert Presley quickly moved out in front of the car he used to drive by two spots. A little further back. If you wonder why people are racing this hard in the back of the pack so early, it does take about 10 laps here to start lapping the field. So this group in the back has really got to run hard so the leaders have clear track in front of them. And it doesn't take long to start lapping. And there's some good cars back there. You're riding with Steve Grissom. Saw Tim Fiedel would get loose. He drops in line behind Shauna Robinson. 
And right behind him, two good cars. Ricky Craven on the inside and Ward Burton on the outside. Looks like Fedewa may have the measure of Shauna here. Looks pretty even down the back stretch. Yeah, this one looks like he might be able to get around either one up here. They're getting together a little bit right in front of him. You see him touch a little bit. Grissom tried the outside and he says, hey, I got to get here on the inside. He's tried both sides. He's trying to pick the one that's going to be able to make that move so he can go with him. As he went to the low side, that took the bottom away from Ricky Craven. Grissom now inside on Tim Fedewa. Fedewa caught up high. Now Ward Burton, you see there in the Hardy's car, went with Fedewa while Craven is trying to go with Grissom. I bet you'll jump over behind that 31 on the inside now. That's the inside line. That's a lot better. And they're moving up on Shauna Robinson and Bobby Dotter. Good racing here back in the pack. See that curving? Look at Grissom trying to get right on up. Get that left run on that curve right up off the corner. Sean Rogers is doing thing he's supposed to protect that inside line down the straightaway. Now in the box in the upper right, the blue car center of the screen is the car you're riding in, that of Steve Grissom. And that's the difference between distance between he and the 35 car. Take you back up front, where Joe Nemechek has just a car length on Ernie Irvin. Irvin. The guy's got to have magic slippers, Neil. No matter what he sits in, the car has blown the last few weeks here. Irvin is in the 74 car here today. Well, magic slippers and a lot of talent. You know, yeah. the guy runs the car really hard. Like you say, anything he gets in, he runs up front. And it's, you just got to be that type of guy. No matter what you crawl in, you got to make it do a man. So he's capable of doing that. Now, about eight car lengths behind them. Third and fourth are still single file, so we'll go back in the pack where Steve Grissom has driven around Shauna Robinson, now bringing Ricky Craven in the 99 with him. And he moves up on Tom Peck. Peck in the Delco Remy Chevy, number 19. Out of Pennsylvania, now here comes Craven in the DuPont 99. And they've kind of left Ward Burton back there. Burton battling along with the 28 car Hutt Strickland in the Mac Tools for today. Grissom and Peck. Trouble on the right rear tire on Robert Presley, we're told. Got the smoke coming out of zero car. We did get a call that was possibly a tire or either maybe the rear end, but there's definitely smoke coming out of zero. Keep an eye out for that. Steve Grissom, two victories and the point lead. David Green, 45 points back, winless so far. To give you an indication where Grissom's at right now, him from having to battle this traffic, he's more than a half a lap behind, so right. he's not the one straightaway in part of the corner from being lapped, so he's got to hustle. You he's, see all the cars that he's passed, Neil, but he's just moved up into 21st spot. That's he, not going to get you a lot of points. Well, we saw if I ride with him, it takes him three or four laps to get one car at a time. There's Chuck Bannon, was he getting under Hermes Sadler? That's, that's the third position. But it takes so long working that traffic, and the leader's out there with no one in front of him, and they're eating him up. Already Nemechek is into lap traffic if he goes by Clay Brown. Then clear sailing ahead for the leaders. You're in the fourth place car, Hermie Sadler. Chasing Chuck Bound. His car is housed. It's a mile or so for Martinsville Speedway. It looks like Jeff Hensley's shop. Mike, it looks like Sadler car to get a little bit looser with him all the time. And that's a, a lot of times you come to place here, you've got to be loose to run fast. They might have qualified so good they're afraid to change the car, but after you qualify, you've got to tighten that thing up some. The car seems it'll be a little bit loose, and there's a little bit of work to do on the car when they get a caution or a pit stop to try to tighten back up some. 